Dr. Chomsky, what would your recommendation be for corporations? Just should they be eliminated, or is there a, is there a trend towards changing them, adapting mm -hmm. them to the democratic ideals? Well, uh, my feeling about corporations is very much like my feeling about Bolshevism and fascism, uh, to which they which they resemble. Uh, in a short-term period, you want to reform them. Okay, so if you're living under, say, the rule of a king, you know, uh, it makes sense to plead with the king to be to act more kindly to his subjects. You know, uh, and that's always good. You know, instead, so don't torture as many people, and you know, give more gifts to poor people, and so on, and that makes good sense. Uh, when the population of the United States by 20 to 1 says that corporations ought to sacrifice profits for communities and uh, workers, that 95% majority is saying the king ought to be more benevolent, not so harsh. Uh, and that's good. I agree with that. The king ought to be more benevolent. But of course, you can go a little further and say, is the institution legitimate at all? And I don't think it is. Uh, uh, for the reasons I discussed, so therefore it ought to be dismantled. Uh, and workers ought to be the masters of their own industrial fate, as uh, Dewey put it. Uh, and all the rest, you know, way back to Lincoln and, you know, back to Aristotle and so on. Uh, now, it's kind of an interesting commentary on the way the propaganda system, the doctrinal system has functioned, that ideas that were standard among, you know, mill hands and Lowell, hundred years ago sound unimaginable today. I mean, they were saying, look, the institution's illegitimate. It's uh, infringing on our rights as free men and women. Uh, we're not, they were not asking the autocracy to be more benevolent. They were saying it should disappear because we want to enjoy the rights that we won in the American Revolution, or so they thought. Nowadays, that's almost unthinkable. Uh, and the most that can be asked for is that the uh, absolutism be more benevolent that the king act a little more nicely. Well, that's a tremendous victory of a propaganda system uh, in which educated sectors have played the leading role, after all. We should re remember that. We're talking about ourselves. Uh, and it has very, uh, it, uh, it's, it's been extremely hard. Uh, for 180 years now, there has been an effort to drive out of people's heads normal, ordinary human sentiments and to make them think just for themselves. You want things just for yourself, you know, instill the new spirit of the age, gain wealth, forgetting all but self. You have no rights other than what you can get on the market. With, of course, that big footnote that the rich and the powerful insist on massive protection from the nanny state uh, in extreme forms under, say, Reagan and Gingrich, but always. Uh, and it's been a very hard battle to get that across. But it's, you know, over time it has worked. So now people don't even think about being free. Uh, the most they think about uh, is uh, asking the ruler to be more benign. But to get back to your question, I don't think we should limit ourselves to that. Yeah, it's important to ask the ruler to be more benign. So, for example, I think we should urgently do something about the fact that we are facing a major social crisis as uh, the advocates of a powerful nanny state for the rich are kicking are, are continuing a massive war that they've been conducting for 15 years against children and families, and women particularly, and are winning it. Uh, they're going to be out in the streets hungry. You know. uh, the main effect of the welfare reform, and certainly its purpose, uh, uh, is to lower wages for poor people. I mean, it didn't take a genius to figure that out. Uh, obviously, if you force people, uh, notice the assumptions that underlie that as well. The assumption is that uh, women who are raising children have to be sent to the workforce. Uh, the impl implication, it's no work to raise children. That just sort of, you know, comes free, like raising children, taking care of a home, that's not work. You know, anybody who's had a child knows that. Uh, what's work is uh, going to the office in downtown Boston and uh, speculating against currencies to lower growth rates. That's work. And you can sort of prove it, because after all, we live in a meritocratic society, so you measure the value of work by the amount you get paid. Uh, for raising a child, you get paid zero. 
for speculating against currencies to lower growth rates, you get paid huge amounts. So those guys must be doing real work. And now we've got to take these other people who aren't doing any work, just raising children, taking care of homes, and so on. Uh, we have to make them work. But of course, they're going to have to work at government subsidized jobs at below minimum wages, which simply harms the lower sector of the workforce, naturally. Now, you know, there's a principle of law that you can uh, determine intent by predictable outcome. You know, if, 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 you can, if the outcome's predictable, you can use that as evidence for intent, which means that obviously this was the intent of the law. Uh, the intent is to continue the major battle against families and children and women and the poor generally and the same thing abroad, uh, but now also to harm even further the what's called unskilled labor. It sounds like a small part of the workforce, except that it's 70% of the workforce. Uh, and that's proceeding, and we should do something about that. So I think that should be immediately on the agenda, make the autocrats be less brutal and cruel. Uh, but I don't think they should have the right to rule either. I think we should be able to understand what mill hands in uh, Massachusetts or Abraham Lincoln or others understood.